After editing the video, I wanted to add this little part in the beginning and let everyone know that I do talk about some things that I struggled with. Did it in a sense that I wanted to help people and let people know that I struggle as well. And it is something that everybody relates to in a sense and you have to start somewhere. So I hope somehow this helps somebody and all right. But I have some resources first as well. All right, so there's a couple days left in May, so make sure that you still like and follow National Teen Pregnancy Prevention Month's Facebook page for any activities and prizes. And if you need any assistance with basic needs, Oswego County Opportunities has their crisis hotline. That is 1-877-342-7618, open Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. All right, enjoy the video. Hi, everyone. Happy Thursday. Today's life skill for Coffee with Kaylin is going to be how to build and maintain a savings account. And this doesn't have to be through a bank. It can be just a cash um, savings that you have at your house or that you keep in a safe, something like that. But just an emergency savings is what I'm talking about. So this is something that I have personally struggled with. Being a single mom, having one income was really hard for me personally. It might not be hard for anybody else and I'm not trying to say mine is better or worse than anybody else's. This is just my personal struggle. When I didn't have the money to pay for a car repair, I would put it on my credit card. Well, I still didn't have the money to pay for that. So I ended up having to pay for a credit card on top of all my monthly bills. So that's not the greatest idea. And I didn't think that that was a bad idea at the time. I racked myself into debt for two years. And just this past August, I started to really buckle down and really get serious about paying off my debt in order to eventually build a savings because I couldn't build a savings if I didn't have any extra money to build a savings with. So I first needed to tackle all my debt, which is very stressful because a, an emergency can happen at any time and it doesn't care if you're in or out of debt, it will just happen. So I figured the sooner the better. So since August, um, I have completely gotten myself out of debt and you really have to be frugal with your money for a little bit. And it takes a lot of self-control and a lot of self-discipline in order to achieve that. And that's something that I struggled with as well, um, being able to maintain it. So, I mean, we can all put $50 in a savings account, but not taking that $50 out whenever you want to buy a new pair of shoes or something is kind of hard. This is why this is so near and dear to my heart is because I have become very passionate about building a savings and maintaining a savings. I have some tips for you and something that has personally worked for me as well. And for this intro, I just kind of wanted to be outside because it's so nice out and I've been inside this whole morning, but I'll be right back. So I had to come back inside because my iPad was dying. That's a bummer. It was really nice outside. And Maybe I might go back outside when it's done charging. Any financial topic is going to be a sensitive topic for somebody because it really makes you be real with yourself and be absolutely honest about where you spend your money, how you spend your money, and if you're making the right financial move. It really gets personal um, when you take a step back and you look at all the things you're paying for. You're trying to change your life at this point. You're trying to change, you know, something about you. You're, you have to sit back and you have to be real with yourself about what you need to spend your money on, what you want to spend your money on. And that brings me to the first tip. You need to evaluate and analyze your needs versus your wants. What you need to survive might be a lot different than what you want in order to survive. You wanna make sure that you're analyzing your spending for 30 days, 30 full days. And if you have a debit card, this might be easier to maybe print off your statement at the end of the month and highlight all the different categories or if you keep like a checkbook um, or a check register anything like that you can even write it down if you use cash you have to be on top of it because um, if I ask you how much your rent is you'll be able to tell me just like that if I ask you how much money you spend a month in eating out you're gonna freeze you're not gonna know the answer right off the top of your head and that's why it comes so easy to spend the money like that Oh, it's only $10 here. It's only $5 here. A coffee is only 
um, McDonald's meal is only $7, not that bad. If you take a whole month's worth of spending eating out, it adds up. My coffee that I used to get at Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks was roughly four to six dollars, depending on where I went. When I sat down and I added up how much money I was spending, it hits you hard. I have um, started doing mine at home and that has been a lot cheaper for me, um, but I don't need it. And it's just something that, it's just something that makes me a little happier. So granted, I feel like I need it sometimes, but I don't. The first tip was evaluate and analyze your needs versus your wants. Second tip was to analyze it over a 30 day period. The third tip is to put any extra money into savings such as um, tax refunds or if you sold something on marketplace, any money that is not your main income. If that is your main income, totally disregard what I just said. If it is not, then add it to your savings. Another huge tip is to pay yourself first. If you are not in debt and you have extra money after paying all your bills, make it a point to add in to pay yourself as one of your monthly bills. And paying yourself means your savings. So you wanna put into your savings, you wanna make that one of your monthly bills. Super easy tip. Um, I say it's super easy, a super simple tip, I guess. Not easy, but pay your bills on time and that would be just to eliminate the late fees and any additional fees or interest or anything like that on top of it. You wanna be able to cut your spending in any way you can. If you have any memberships or subscriptions that you can cancel, that would add to your extra money that you have. You also wanna have goals, goals for your savings. So you wanna have a short-term goal, which is like one to three years. Like short-term goals can be an emergency fund, a vacation, a down payment on a car, Long-term goals would be your child's education, um, a down payment on a house, or, or retirement. So an emergency fund is typically to be for an emergency, such as car maintenance, such as being without a job, which kind of relates to right now. It helps you in an emergency. And in order to replenish that after you use it, say you need to buy new tires for your vehicle that's like eight hundred dollars yeah you have eight hundred less dollars in your savings that was what that was for though that was exactly what that was for so you don't have to fork up eight hundred dollars all at once you had put it away for a long period of time that's what i get concerned about is i don't want to use my savings ever now like i don't ever want to touch it even if there is an emergency because i just worked so hard at putting all that money in there. I just have to keep putting into it it's kind of like starting from scratch at that point but you're experienced, so you know. So now here's the tips that I personally used. I went from never tracking anything that I was buying, never writing down anything, um, overdrafting my accounts because I used too much money that I didn't realize I used, to I started using um, something called a budget planner that my sister had actually made for me because I asked her for help. I said, listen, like kind of got myself into a hole. I need somebody to one, hold me accountable and to help me out. Made me a little budget book. And what it was is it set up the top like amount for income um, or paycheck amount. And then I put that at the top and then I put the bills that I needed to pay underneath it and how much they were. And I added those up and I ended up with a um, remaining number, a remaining cash number which was not very big at first. Any remaining number that I had at the bottom of that, for instance, there was $100 left after paying all my bills. I would put an extra $25 toward one of my bills and try to get one paid off at a time. After I got all of my bills paid off, I ended up with a lot of extra money at the end of the month. So then I ended up using that to build my savings. I make it a point to put a certain amount every paycheck into my savings and I have that budgeted into my bills. I will let you know I just experienced this emergency fund situation right now. A couple days ago I went to go put my air conditioner in and realized it was beyond repair, it was beyond cleaning, it was in a garage for the whole winter getting gross and it just wasn't able to be clean. So I needed to buy a new air conditioner and 
air conditioners aren't cheap. So having the savings actually helped me out because I don't now need to fork out $300 out of one paycheck. I can take it out of my savings. Say so that's super helpful. That's super helpful. Floyd will end this video with Old McDonald's Farm. He's gonna have to listen to my kids sing Old McDonald. I mean, I have to listen to it 20 times a day, so now you have to listen to it. I'm all about sharing. Sharing is caring. I hope everybody has a wonderful Thursday and a great Friday, and this weekend should be really nice. So make sure you get outside if you're able to. I'll see you again later. Bye.